Hey y'all, thank you for clicking on this video. Have you ever wondered where Taylor Swift got the idea to switch from country music to pop music? Or maybe where Willie Nelson got his first big break? Well, in this video, we're gonna look at the life and legacy of one of the greatest female artists of all time, Patsy Cline. Let's get into the video. What is up you guys? My name is Lucy Claire. Welcome to my second video officially. First of all, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed, to everyone who's liked, to everyone who's commented. There was an outpouring of support and I especially want to thank Mary Chen. That was such an amazing thing to do to shout me out, so I really appreciate it. So, without further ado, I'm gonna do something a little different with the channel this week. As I told you in my last video, the vinyl tag, go watch it if you haven't, I'll put a link above. Um, I told you all that I was a huge music history fanatic and I didn't know what better way to share that with you all than a behind the band series. If life goes as I hope it will, as we all hope it will, I'm gonna try to do this once a month, choose a different band to do a deep dive and study the twists and turns of their career, what their first big hit was, what their biggest hit was, maybe how they got their start, where their big hits came from, maybe even what mark and legacy they left on society and the culture of music that we have now. But if you have suggestions for that, let me know. So this month we are diving into one of the most classic female vocalists of all time, I would say of the 20th century, Patsy Cline. But before diving in, I have decided that each of my videos is going to include a music trivia fun fact for my own enjoyment and hopefully also your enjoyment. If you have one that you'd like me to include in a future video, just type it in the comments below and I might just use it next time. I'm looking forward to seeing your submissions. Our first music trivia fun fact is, drum roll please, in 1996, Ringo Starr appeared in a Japanese advertisement for applesauce. That's right, applesauce. Because in Japanese, Ringo means apple, so let's just let that sink in. At first I couldn't believe it, but it is true, I will find the footage if I can and link it in the description or include it somewhere in the video. Anyway, let's do our deep dive on Patsy Cline. I do wanna add that this video is basically completely inspired by my love of this Greatest Hits Patsy Cline album and Patsy Cline is just a powerhouse of sound and a crossover genius. I just, I love this record so much. So, without further ado, Let's deep dive into Patsy Cline. Cline was born Virginia Patterson Hensley in Winchester, Virginia. Cline's mother, Hilda, was only 16 years old when Patsy was born. Her family moved around Virginia before settling in a town called Winchester, Virginia. She lived in this house on South Kent Street from the time she was 16 till she was 21. At age 13, Klein was hospitalized with a throat infection and rheumatic fever, and Klein largely attributed the development and recovery from rheumatic fever to the depth and volume of her voice. Klein was continuing with her education into high school, but due to financial struggle with her family, she decided to drop out of high school and sustain her family's income as a soda jerk store clerk in Winchester. In 1952, Klein auditioned and began performing regularly for Bill Pierce's Melody Boys and Girls. In March 1953, Klein married Gerald Klein. However, during this marriage, Klein also became romantically involved with Bill Pierce as well. He was the man that encouraged her to change her name and to iron out her stage name. Obviously, Klein was her married name. She changed her first name from Virginia to Patsy, which was taken from her middle name, Patterson. Her middle name is Patterson, so that's that's all I can say. Ultimately, she became professionally known as Patsy Cline. In August 1953, Cline won a country music contest, of which the prize was, let this sink in, $100, and one performance on the critically acclaimed show. Connie B. Gay's 
Town and Country Time. Now, I'm not old enough to know this show, but if you are, let us know if it was a good show or if it wasn't. This was kind of Patsy's first big break into prime time. In 1954, Patsy was signed to Four Star Records. They basically played the classic music industry game and took Patsy for all that she was worth. Most of the money that Klein earned off of her first few albums were stripped from her out of her contract and she got about 2%, so that sucks. The label produced her first single, A Church, A Courtroom, and Then Goodbye, which is not on any of her greatest hits albums, obviously. In 1956, Patsy and Gerald lived separately and got divorced. Gerald could never adjust to her touring lifestyle. She was just too awesome for him. You know, that happens. After a pivotal performance of Walk In After Midnight, on the LA-based show Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts, Patsy's single blew to the top of the charts. So much so that Decca rushed released it as a single. She was still signed to Four Star at that time. In 1957, she married her second husband, Charlie Dick, and had her first daughter, Julie. She moved to Nashville, Tennessee, and also released her debut solo album on Decca Records. It was one busy year. In 1960, Klein officially became a member of the Grand Old Opry and was eventually signed to Decca Records and left Four Star in the dust forever. They were not nice to Batsy. On June 14th, 1961, Klein and her brother were in a head-on car collision. Two of the three passengers in the other car did not survive. After surgery and much needed recovery, Klein was kind of plagued with pain and headaches, as well as self-consciousness due to her scars. Patsy would come out with straight hits from 1962 onward. She had songs like Crazy, She's Got You, and So Wrong. They kept rolling off the presses. She was unstoppable material. She was finally financially stable and able to buy her own dream home. Eventually, after attempting to star in a failed movie and a few flopped songs, Patsy's financial situation took a decline and her financial future became unstable. Her manager got her a gig singing at the Merriment Hotel in Las Vegas. The gig lasted about 35 days and let's just say Patsy didn't like it. She interviewed saying she hated the gig. As Klein got closer to the end of her life, she started telling people around her, like Loretta Lynn, that she was having premonitions of her own death. In 1963, these premonitions came to fruition when she was in a plane crash with several others right outside of Camden, Tennessee. Oof, that gives me chills to think about. They landed in a small forest where the wreckage was recovered the next day. Some of the items which were recovered. They were eventually donated to the Country Music Hall of Fame. Among those things were Klein's wristwatch, a cigarette lighter, a studded belt, and three pairs of gold slippers. It seems like looters got to the crash first because Klein's fee in cash and her attire from the last performance were never recovered. Per her wishes, Klein's body was brought home for her memorial, which of course thousands of people attended. Her grave is marked Virginia H. Dick, Patsy Klein. Death cannot kill what never dies. Love. I just think her life story is so amazing. I mean, she is the epitome of life is short, so live it to the fullest. Patsy was a force to be reckoned with in country music, and now I want to talk about some of the hits and their histories individually. I chose three really important songs, all that are on that record that I showed you earlier, and I think you're really going to enjoy them. Okay, the first song is Crazy. It was composed by the well-known country artist Willie Nelson in 1961. It actually was originally written for country singer Billy Walker, but he rejected the song because he had a feeling that it was a girl song. What does that mean? What is a girl song? Anyway, Crazy, known for its complex melody, suited Klein's vocal talent perfectly and was released in late 1961. It spent 21 weeks on the chart and eventually became one of her signature tunes. Klein's version of Crazy is number 85 on Rolling Stone's list of the 500 greatest songs of all time, making it the highest ranked song by a female artist after Respect 
by Aretha Franklin at number five, and by Walk On By by Dionne Warwick at 70. That's so impressive. What a category to be in. Klein sang the whole vocal track in one take. Loretta Lynn remembers the first time Klein performed a song Crazy at the Grand Old Opry on crutches. This woman performed Crazy on crutches in the Grand Old Opry. She received three standing ovations. The second song I wanna talk about is a favorite of mine, Walkin' After Midnight. The song was composed by Alan Block and Don Hecht in 1954. This song was originally given to the pop singer K-Star, but her label rejected the song. In January 1957, Klein performed the song on an episode of the CBS television program, Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts. It garnered a strong response from viewers and was therefore Rush released as a single. Walkin' After Midnight was Klein's first major hit, reaching number two on the Billboard Country Music chart and number 12 on the pop chart. Remember when I mentioned Taylor Swift's country pop crossover? Patsy Klein was the original Taylor Swift. Don't sue me. Hot take, I know. The single sold over 1 million copies and is often included on an authoritative list of the all-time greatest songs in country music. The third song is I Fall to Pieces. The demo version of the song was recorded at Pamper Music in Goodlettsville, Tennessee by Howard's wife, who was also a country singer, Jan Howard. Howard pitched the song to Decca producer Owen Bradley, who tried to find the perfect artist for the song. He didn't do a great job. The song was turned down numerous times, first by Brenda Lee, who found the song too country for her pop style. When Klein began recording the song, she started having second thoughts about it, especially after she discovered that the popular backing group, the Jordanaires, would serve as the support vocalist. Klein was afraid, I suppose, that the Jordanaires would drown out her sound. And as a result, she was apparently not very friendly on their first meeting. This is all according to Jordanaire frontman, Gordon Stoker. After listening to the playback of the recording, she ended up liking the recording. Subsequently, her and the Jordanaires became quick friends and they became part of Patsy Cline's inner circle. Talk about a turnaround. I Fall to Pieces, the song was released the 30th of January, 1961. It was virtually ignored by every radio station, both pop and country. The song finally debuted on the Billboard country chart and began the slowest ascent ever seen on the country charts. By August 1961, I Fall to Pieces peaked at number one, folks. Number one on the Billboard country chart and reached number 12 again on the Billboard pop chart. The song was also one of the slowest chart descenders of all time. As a result, Klein was able to prove that a solo female artist could have major hits on both the country and the pop charts. So take that, Taylor Swift. In 2014, Rolling Stone named the song number 40 on the 40 saddest country songs of all time. Man, that has gotta be a bummer list because country songs can get sad. Lastly, I wanna talk about the legacy that Patsy Cline left as an artist, her cultural significance, some could say, because I think that there is something so salient about her career. Cline has been a major influence on various musical artists. That includes a long list of female singers, Reba McIntyre, Loretta Lynn, Linda Ronstadt, Dottie West, Casey Musgraves, Cindy Lauper, and Brandi Carlile. So she has no shortage of amazing talent. In 1973, Klein was introduced in the Country Music Hall of Fame. With that induction, she became the first female solo artist to be included. In 1995, she received a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Let's give a big shout out to Patsy Klein for creating a genre that is so rich and so full and so able to mold to new and changing traditions. If anything, we got some amazing songs to listen to on our Greatest Hits albums. All right, that is the first Behind the Band episode. Let's call it a wrap. I would love to hear comments that you have about Patsy Cline in the comments. So share, share, share. Please like and subscribe. I am a small channel, yes, but we are moving forward. I can't wait to share more content with you all. See you next week.